Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. Today I have with me Domenico Torello, Kevin Wash, and James Hale. I'm Dr. Robin. And the question I would like to ask is, how do you recognize opportunities? And equally or more important, how do you take advantage of them? Jim, can you kick us off? Well, I think uh, in order to take a, a recognize an opportunity, you have to have two things going for you. And that is to be a good listener. And whoever you're speaking with, listen to them well, understand who they are, what they do. And secondly, you must have a good memory to remember who you talk to, what they do, and what they have done. And then when the situation presents itself, you can say, oh, I know somebody. And it might be a value to me or to that person or to the organization. And that's where you know there's an opportunity. Mm, noticing. Mm -hmm. I actually see opportunity more in a product because uh, my business as an entrepreneur uh, is developing new product. So what happens is uh, when I'm globetrotting uh, I'm in China, I'm seeing hundreds and thousands of suppliers uh, in a given week at trade shows. And you have to, in my mind, looking for a product that is one, uniquely different from what is on the market. And secondly, uh, something that gives a benefit to the consumer. So for me, when I'm, 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 sourcing and finding new products. Uh, it's those two particular things where uh, I see opportunities. I think I can add a third uh, quality to uh, Jim's too. I think the third quality is work ethic mm. because normally to find an opportunity, it's wrapped up in something called work. And if you don't have the ethic to actually produce and deliver something, it doesn't really matter how many opportunities slap you around the face, you won't actually take advantage of any of them. Uh, the other thing for me is also it's about scale of opportunity. I understand what you're saying there, um, Dominica, where you're looking at new products, but I think there's opportunities to be had on a daily basis from the smallest scale. Part of my work is to increase productivity in companies. And some people just walk around blinded to opportunities. If I give you one small example of what I'm talking about, I don't know what it's like in America, but in Europe, for example, you walk into a restaurant, people sit you down at a table and leave you alone. And then eventually somebody will come and bring you a menu. Now, for me, if I'm going to a restaurant, the chances are I'm going to spend some time there. So an opportunity would be when the waiter or waitress sits me down, why not sell me my first drink of the evening? Mm -hmm. Why not turn that into a productive time and start to encourage my bill to develop to a higher level than I'd anticipated? There's an opportunity. And the reward is good service, bigger tips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they do that very well in the United States as a <laughs> extremely well. The Spanish as are Canadian, very poor at it. <laughs> yeah, as a Canadian who's traveled extensively, gone to the United States, that's the first question that I hear. Fantastic, I love it. Restaurant. So, I guess the Americans have it. I guess the Canadians similar too, but yeah, uh, they definitely jump on that when you're in a restaurant in the States. The other thing I was thinking about in terms of opportunity is that. I think spotting opportunity is a characteristic of not everybody. So what happens is mm -hmm. saying, Kevin, uh, people walk by opportunities every day and they don't notice them or they don't take advantage of them. But in my mind, like a horse without blinders, you have to see 180 degrees. You have to see everything even behind you to spot opportunities. And I think that's something that not everybody has in their, in their DNA is spotting opportunities. I think your point's well taken. In fact, it's an awareness looking, being aware of what's going on and having that creativity to link things together. And the reason why I say that is a product that I developed years ago and, and to this day, uh, many people will say to me, oh, I don't know why I ever thought about that. That's something that's been re required on the market for a long time. I can't believe I didn't think about that. And again, it's, to my point is that some people see them and take advantage of them. And, and as uh, Kevin said, other people just walk right by them. How much of it has to do with intuition? How much of it is gut feel and not logic? I think there's another one to look at as well. How much of it is down to your own inquisitive nature? Mm -hmm. How many people look behind what's there and think, I can do this in a better way. Sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to improve the one that's there. Yeah. When I was younger, I went to a, a group think tank. It was a gentleman who owned, it was in Ohio called the Eureka Ranch. And he, he was a, a Colgate Palmolive a superstar. And he opened up his own uh, business to train people about marketing and seeing opportunities. And the most important thing that he said was that not everybody sees 
a product in terms of its uniqueness and user benefit. So he had three criteria that decides whether a product will be a hit or a miss. And his, his other thing was that not everybody can see these things. Again, I'm talking more in terms of product development and new products, but that's his trend of thought was this is a rare quality that spot a star like this out there. Well, think in terms of Uber and how Uber started, and now you have Uber Eats, mm. a whole different uh, product or service. Mm -hmm. So you link it into making money, profit, expanding your business, growing your business. I think that um, Uber is a great example. There's Twitter. There's so many great examples of entrepreneurs that have created these wonderful opportunities and the rewards they, they get are absolutely amazing. I also think that there's no bottom end to the scale. I understand where you're coming from, Dominica, where you're looking at products. I look at individuals and I see the opportunities within an individual to improve themselves. And that may be taking very small steps, but the rewards that they will get determine whether it's if they want more energy, if they want a better relationship, if they want to be more productive in their work. It all depends what they want. But if they put the work into it, the opportunity is there. Hmm. It's funny you mentioned that I... In Montreal, um, a, a friend of mine's uh, cousin was one of the guys who invented the software behind Expedia. Mm -hmm. And Montreal it was one of the biggest venture capital deals in Montreal, Quebec, or Canadian history. And the funny thing is, when he was presenting to people like Microsoft and whoever eventually bought him, they were saying to him, no one's ever going to book plane tickets, hotels online. No one's going to put their credit cards online in and he's like, yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. And this guy ended up becoming what is today Expedia and everybody else that copied them. But again, like you were saying, Kevin, like you were saying, James, this is an innovative thinking whereby how do you expand your Uber? You become Uber Eats or you got become Uber whatever, growing that product into other veins. And that's what my friend's cousin did. He, he revamped the world, uh, purchasing tickets, hotels and travel online. And I feel like what we're saying too, is that not only do you have to recognize the opportunity and take advantage of it, you then have to stand up to the naysayers as well. Exactly. I would think that's one of the biggest challenges of it all, Robin, because I think that the people that have got the ability to see and spot this opening, that 99 out of 100, 99 other people won't see it and probably won't believe in it. So yeah, I'm sure these guys that, have, that come up with these amazing ideas, like you're saying there about the people saying Wikipedia, that won't work. There was a great example of an English television program called The Apprentice um, with a, a Lord Sugar. And there was a guy there and he got all the way through to the semi-final and he pitched his vision and his vision was people buying real estate online. And there's an immortal, a fantastic quote where Lord Sugar says, nobody will ever buy a house online. <laughs> you look at it today. The guy went off, started his own business and became a multimillionaire from it. So some people just don't see it. They don't get it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the, the situation causes opportunity. Example, the pandemic. When you go to the doctors or dentists these days, especially at the height of the pandemic, instead of walking in, they set up electronic devices to measure your temperature that you could read off of a computer instead of sticking a thermometer in your mouth. Mm. Mm -hmm. To address your comment, Kevin, about the entrepreneurs and believing in them, this guy who invented the software for Expedia pretty much ate potatoes for a year <laughs> life and pretty much lived in his car. Basically, people started to believe him. And then um, his business, uh, he had five people courting him to buy his business. And, and you see what the world turned out today. But imagine a guy was eating potatoes and living in his car uh, before he became this Expedia uh, multimillionaire. I yeah. think a lot of it also will depend on the, the demographic that you're pitching your idea to. If you talk to people of my kind of dinosaur age, our idea of business was based on cash flow turnover, overheads. And the idea was you always had greater income than you had outgoing. You look at the modern business and the amount of money. And if I take um, WeWork as an example of that, the amount of money that a business can lose and lose and lose millions of dollars a day. Yeah. Yeah. And yet eventually they know there's a point where somebody will come in, that unicorn will appear and suddenly the, the business is worth billions. If you talk to an older demographic, they'll say, well, that can't possibly work. And that would generally close their mentality towards it. But it seems to be a lot of today's businesses lose absolute fortunes before they get to that point where it turns around. Yeah, and, and they have guys, money coming in. Are, yeah, they're it. prepared to do it. They're prepared to sit and watch it burn. That is our 10 minutes. So we'll have to cut it off there. Thank you for having this conversation with me about opportunities and noticing and then 
dealing with the naysayers. I appreciate it so much. And I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon.